We are standing on our Valhall platform in the middle of the North Sea, one of five production units operated by Aka BP. This field has been in production since 1982, and since 2013 it has been electrified with power from shore, and thus no need for an on-platform power generation. This means that Valhall has led the way in the oil and gas industry for many years already with close to zero emissions to air. Every day our job is to operate our fields with zero accidents, high production efficiency and low cost and low emissions. And the latter is of course becoming increasingly important every day. As a part of our journey to become the leading offshore in an EMP company, we have expanded our digital capabilities together with John Marcus and his Cognite team. Today, Valhall is a fully digitalized asset with digital infrastructure and real-time data access. Our offshore operators are equipped with connected handheld devices for easy access to data and communication. And we're leveraging onshore collaboration centers and remote support to our offshore activities. And we have suppliers who are highly motivated to take part in the digital transformation of this industry towards higher efficiency, lower cost and lower emissions. Going forward, digital tools and digital capabilities will help us with the next big challenge to reach our emission reductions across the entire Arca BP portfolio by approximately 50% by the 2030s and further down towards net zero in 2050. There is no doubt that the oil and gas companies of the future need to be more adaptive, more efficient and much more sustainable. It's really you know, exciting to be here at Valhall, one of the first electrified you know, assets at the Norwegian continental shelf and also one of the assets that are the most advanced when it comes to digitalization. I'm here at Valhall, we, uh, even if I'm struggling to get mine out, uh, we have a crypto operators with handheld devices just like this one. This is in use in every day, everybody's equipment is. They use them to communicate, display information, real time and documents on the equipment that they're working on. And it helps improve the efficiency of the everyday work. And I can assure you, being the pioneer of displaying this kind of technology in scale, we have learned a lot. It's been a bumpy road. But I can also assure you that technologies such as these handheld devices and the apps contained within them are certainly the way forward to improve efficiency, energy efficiency and lower cost on assets such as the Valhall asset. This is truly the future. So LKBP and Cognite started to work together back in 2017 and in the beginning really the first thing we worked on was what we call data liberation, the ability to take data from both the conventional IT systems and OT systems and merge it together. And uh, you know, you know, through you know, Cognite Data Fusion, that was really uh, uh, the first you know, part of what we did. And we were the first ones in the world to really create a unified IT, OT data architecture. Then, of course, we have worked together over the last you know, four years and we, and we stand here today with a fant you know, you know, fantastic you know, solution related to digital workers. So every employee on the Valhall assets is now uh, uh, you know, enabled through the infield digital application. But, but through those you know, four years, there's also been lots of ups and downs. So Kalle, can you explain a little bit uh, on, on some of the key learnings that we've been through and that people should be aware of? Yeah, so <laughs> it's a really good question, Marcus. Um, but there are obvious, I mean, obvious things like the first uh, generation of uh, handheld devices we rolled out. We really didn't have sufficient uh, Wi-Fi coverage on the assets and then in reality it was a humongously expensive mp3 and uh, and camera uh, and then as, as uh, we progressed and we solved the technical issues it's about how do you integrate these new ways of working into the ways of actually carrying out the work it's stuff like uh, work orders work permits uh, making uh, photos a part of how you work with integrity uh, how do you actually think about sensors and how sensors are uh, uh, impacting the work you do on an asset? So there's a lots of these, I would say, cross uh, valuation, cross uh, discipline uh, topics 
that is not necessarily related directly to technology, but it's more how you adapt and scale and uh, make the technology impact your businesses, which has been the key learnings, I would say. Also, uh, I've been you know, learning from this. I think it's also key that we are operating in a really critical infrastructure in, in, the, in the contrast to consumer apps where it's not that much of a problem if the app doesn't work. Of course, out here, if I'm in front of a valve, I need to know that I can trust the app, I can trust the data. But that's also, I think, a key thing. And, and of course, also, at the same time, this is also much more, let's say, rugged environments, as we can see here. It's windy, it can be raining. It's, so it's also important that the application is really um, usable uh, with people in the field. And I think that's one, you know, as you just said, one of the key successes is that we've had the people we have worked closely with the people at Valhall to make sure it really works to sort of solve the devils in the detail, if you will. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. Uh, and there is something about actually testing the technology in the field, right? So, so this whole discussion around HoloLenses and all that kind of very fancy visual technology, which works fine in the masses and conferences. But take one out here in February and a gale force wind, see splashing around it. I can tell you it's not that funny. Uh, but, but I think the, the important thing here is that the technology that we, did, uh, that we have worked with Cognite on developing, that, that data infrastructure, that data liberation, that is really the foundation. And then it's about creating these new business management processes, the work processes. It's about actually getting that technology out into the, the edge of the organization. That's a critical issue, right? And then I, I think there's a, there's a big question, how, how do you actually turn these technology projects into profit? Which is, is one of the more challenging topics, right? Because it's easy enough to implement stuff like a handheld device, which may shave off, let's say, 45 to 50 to 60 minutes of a workday in its own. But how do you actually convert that into increased profitability? Which I think is one of the topics that we are kind of struggling with at the moment. But I would, also, I would also say that one of the key learnings here is that you cannot solve this uh, in solo. I mean, we as an oil and gas company, we could not solve the technology challenges. And I'll put it to your Marcus, that he as a technology provider could probably not have come forward with the product that he has now developed and is sellable to all the customers without that extremely close interaction between the technology provider and the oil and gas company. And that's probably one of the key learnings from this journey since 2017, that collaboration is actually key. If you do not collaborate on the fundamental things and you do not build sufficient trust to actually work on the really hard problems, it'll be humongously difficult to actually get to where we are today. I, f I fully agree. And I think also, you know, one of the interesting things is that when we started, we had a feeling maybe that uh, oil and gas and, uh, you know, and energy sector, you know, were behind other sectors. But we're clearly seeing exactly the opposite. Uh, you know, as I said, that, you know, what we have developed here is really world, you know, leading. And now we're also, you know, able to take this into other industries. I think the, uh, you would think that working digitally, you know, working with digital applications on, on mobile devices is something that is straightforward, that would exist in, in everywhere, but it's not. I think, well, so I think, you know, this is also a great example of how the energy and oil and gas sector is a leader in terms of developing new technologies that can also be deployed into for example, the renewable sector and other industries, which is also, you know, quite important for uh, you know for the oil and gas you know sector, uh, uh, you know, in general. And hopefully, we can also have the return effect, right? Exactly. So when you've yeah. implemented that technology in other industries, yeah. I mean, you've learned a lot that we can implement here in the oil and gas sector as well. Exactly. But I think one of the other key learnings that uh, we've experienced quite significantly is we started out with singular use cases, pretty much spread at the point. I think we had 200 use cases that we were working on simultaneously. Quite common in many companies. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that really did not work. There was a lot of enthusiasm. I was one of the most enthusiastic uh, on that kind of, of way of working. But in reality, we have moved into more transformational, uh, more integrated processes where we're now kind of solving this puzzle piece by piece and we're integrating the pieces with a uh, combined plan in front of the technology development. And I think that's probably the biggest shift both in uh, value outtake 
in, in uh, technology spacing, but also in implementation across the business because it actually solves the, the improvement issues without kind of working that simple yeah. use case, but you're integrating it with all the other use cases that you constitute kind of a, a workflow. I think you're a little bit self-critical when it comes to the first, because I think for the first, you know, let's say six, 12, 18 months without trying out, you know, use cases, we would maybe not find those particular ones, but, uh, but at the same time, you know, to really capture the value, as you said, you need to focus down on the fewer cases, you know, maybe a handful, and make sure people, uh, you know, in the operations really own the value capture. That's really, as you said, uh, the key, you know, so, you know, success criteria. And then, you know, when you have a, a robust data architecture with a proven way to execute, you know, solutions, you know, and use cases, you can accelerate. Yeah. And, and so, so you can take fewer use cases, but do more of them in, you know, you know quicker in sequence. That's really the, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the recipe for success. The next big thing for me is really around how can we use the strengths we have in the energy sector and the oil and gas sector to really transform us into the future. That means both making the oil and gas you know, sector more energy effective, more uh, you know, effective in, you know, in, you know, in general, so we can make it more environmentally friendly and more sustainable. Secondly, it, it's also about a, a young talent. There's no other area where you can attack really complex technology you know, challenges and at the same time make so much impact, both with the oil and gas you know, sector specifically, but also in terms of transforming in, in, you know, energy into renewables over time. The next big thing to me is, and this will sound pretty sexy, is actually more of what we've been doing. It's about producing oil and gas at a lower cost high uptime, high efficiency, and zero accidents, and then of course, increasingly important, lower and lower emissions. And this can only actually be done by implementing, adapting, adjusting new technology to the current work processes. And as a byproduct, we are getting to a place where we can attract new young talent, which expect to work with cutting edge technology on the hardest problems on the planet. But this, the oil and gas industry, has been doing for generations. So the next big thing is more of the last big thing, just better. <laughs>